There is probably a book in your home about which you know very little. How can I make such a statement? Because you're not all alone. You have a lot of company. This book, which nearly everybody owns, is also a book that nearly no one knows. What is this book? It's the Bible. The book which a majority of Americans believe holds the answers to all of life's basic questions. Yet most adults can't name the first book in the Bible. How about you? What do you know about this book, the Holy Bible? Do you know what it says? Do you know whether you can trust its words and rely on it as a guide for life? To survive in today's world, you need to understand the message this book has for you. Stay with us on Beyond Today as we discover the book nobody knows. Join our host, Darius McNeely, and his guests as they help you understand your future on Beyond Today. Let's take a short quiz about Bible knowledge. Can you name the four Gospels in the New Testament? Can you name the first book of the Bible? Which city was Jesus born in? Okay, that's all. How did you do? If you named more than one of the four Gospels, you did better than half of American adults. And if you named Genesis as the first book of the Bible, then you know more than most Americans. And if you named Bethlehem as the city in which Jesus was born, you are way ahead of most. Bible literacy is at an all-time low in the United States. Whether you look at adults, youth, or those who describe themselves as born-again evangelicals, America has become a nation where Bible illiteracy is quite common. Biblical illiterates is what one pollster calls us. And this is in spite of the fact that virtually every American home has at least one Bible, publishers sell about 20 million Bibles annually, and the Gideons International Group give away a new Bible every second of every day. People say they are reading the Bible at least twice a month, but are they reading it with understanding? Now, I don't mean to treat the Bible as a bunch of facts that you need to know just to be literate. That's not the point. The Bible is not that kind of book. It is critical that you understand what's in the book, but you have to know the book before you can understand. You see, knowledge leads to understanding. When I was a child, I was taught a lot of facts about the Bible and its characters and its stories. You were probably taught the same. But when I got older, I learned what all of those stories meant. I finally understood why the Bible and the people in the Bible was written and how they lived and the way they did what they did. The Bible itself, at that point in my life, really began to make more sense and it began to come alive. I wonder if we really appreciate what we have in this book called the Bible, which again is so much a part of American life. You see, this book, the Bible, has a very long and a very passionate history. Its oldest writings stretch back in time more than 3,000 years. Multiple authors, guided by one mind, wrote its pages over a period of nearly 1,400 years. One person, one, one mind that is, through many different people. And yet, despite that, and despite the distance of time, there is a unity that ties the book together from the beginning to the end. It's important that we understand that one mind wrote this book. That's hard for us to grasp, that hundreds of years went by in the, in the compilation of this book, the Bible. What's even harder to understand is that people did not have this book in their hands for a long period of time as well. You see, printing for the masses did not exist until well into the 16th century. Prior to that time, you had to be fabulously wealthy to own even one page of the Bible. In England, during the 1300s, there was a theologian and a scholar by the name of John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe began translating parts of the Bible, one page, one book at a time. And he began making copies available to the people who wanted to listen and wanted to read. Many, some could read it. Not everyone was able to. He had followers uh, that they were, were called lollards. People who would take pages of Wycliffe's translation, put them into their coats, and go off and teach people and be, in a sense, preachers of, of the Word of God. And it spread that way, and it was quite a story, but there was a great deal of opposition. In fact, these people's lives were at stake. They were hunted down. John Wycliffe, fortunately, died in his bed at an old age of natural causes. But the passions that he had raised within the country never really did die down. 
A few years after Wycliffe's death, his body was taken out of a grave, and it was burned. The story of that is told in a book entitled Wide as the Waters by Benson Bobrick, which talks about the story of the English Bible and the revolution that it inspired. Wycliffe's actions created such a furor that a later church council in England demanded that his body be taken out of the grave, burned, and then his ashes scattered into the waters, and those waters went from one stage to the next. In fact, there was a poem that was written about Wycliffe and his ashes. It goes, there's one stanza, if I can share it with you, that says this, The Avon to the Severn runs, the Severn to the sea, and Wycliffe's dust shall spread abroad, wide as the waters be. His ashes did spread abroad very wide, but also the pages of the Bible, the translations that he and others that were to come also spread in English and in other languages throughout the world. People had a fire and a hunger that was ignited within their lives to hear and to read the Bible expressed to them. In fact, this, this book goes on and it makes the point that people would actually trade a load of hay just to be able to look at and to see and own a page out of one of the epistles of Paul or one of the letters of the Apostle Peter. That's how hungry they were to hear and to understand the Word of God which we have available to us so readily today. You see, in that age and in that time, most people, including the clergy, knew very little about the Bible. In 1408, an English bishop forbade anyone to translate or even to read a version of the Bible in whole or in part without the approval of a minister. Hard to believe, isn't it? The Bible is also translated into the, the language of the common person in the 1500s and later its spread was resisted even further by religious and political authorities. The Bible's message was really a threat to ignorance and to superstition in its day. There was another man later on who translated the entire Bible. His name was William Tyndale. Tyndale had to flee his home in England. He went to the continent of Europe. He was uh, betrayed by his friends. He was arrested. He, his translation actually spread the Bible, and he was himself was condemned as a heretic. After his arrest and his trial, very quickly, he was strangled, and he was burned at the stake for his efforts. His very last words have rung throughout history. He said, Lord, in a prayer, as the flames were looking at his body, open the eyes of the King of England. It took a few years for the king's eyes to be opened, but they were. Translating and publishing God's word in the language of the people was a revolutionary act. Now, that is very hard for us to understand today. It would take several more years, and ultimately there would be a version of the Bible done by King James I of England. He would authorize the Bible that really has become the standard for English and for many other translations to this day. The King James Bible was authorized and is still with us to this very day. And so when we understand and when we look at the Bible, we understand what is being said, it is important to realize just how valuable this book has come is and how important it is for you and I to understand and to look at this book with a reverence and an awe. There's a scripture in the book of Acts, chapter 17, that takes us really to the essence, I think, of a principle that is important for us to understand regarding the Bible. In Acts chapter 17 and in verse 11, the Apostle Paul was coming to a group of people. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And he'd had to flee one city, and he'd come to another, a city of, called Bere of, uh, Berea. And in that city, it was said of those people, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. It says that these people searched the scriptures daily with all readiness. They received the word with all readiness. That's, that's again a principle of Bible study and an approach to this word that I think is, is important and represents one of the most important things that I want to get across to you here in this program today. That we must come to the point where we receive this word with all readiness of mind. What you have in your home is a book that virtually no one knows. It's, it's come down to us at a huge cost in human life. People gave their lives to put a copy of the book in, in our laps. And it's important for us to appreciate it, 
to come to the point where we receive it with all readiness of mind and ask some very hard questions about what our life here is all about and go to this book for those answers because those answers are found in this book, the book that not everyone really does know or does understand, but they, they sincerely desire to seek and to know and to understand this book. And that's what this program is all about. That's what this booklet is all about that we're offering today entitled, Is the Bible True? This is a free piece of literature that has been put together with the intent of helping you to understand the Bible, to have confidence in the Bible as a book of truth and revelation from God. When you look at what we have put together here, I think there are a number of topics that are covered in, in a very general sense that will help you to understand whether the Bible is true. Some of the chapter headings include the, the Bible in the modern world, the Bible and archaeology, the Bible and prophecy, and perhaps most important of all, the Bible and you. Is the Bible True is a very valuable booklet uh, that we can put into your hands to help you to have a confidence and an appreciation that this book is one that can be a guide to your life and to help you in understanding God's purpose and plan for you. You can go online at beyondtoday.tv and order a copy of the booklet. You'll also receive when you do a free one-year subscription to the Good News Magazine, which is a, a monthly publication actually six times a year that will begin to come to you. You'll get a free one-year subscription. And the Good News Magazine it contains articles on a regular basis dealing with Christian living, articles to help you in your family life, your own personal study of God's Word, articles on Bible prophecy. You can go online at beyondtoday.tv or you can call one 886 8632 to request your free copy and your subscription. That's one 886 8632 or go online at beyondtoday.tv. There's another story that's interesting for us to understand and to appreciate from the modern time. It's a little bit closer to home to us. It's the story of a journalist by the name of Terry Anderson. Some of you are going to remember this gentleman. In the mid-1980s, Terry Anderson was a journalist working for the Associated Press, and his only crime was that he happened to be an American in the wrong place at the wrong time. The wrong place was Beirut, Lebanon. And he was taken pr uh, prisoner as a political pawn, and he was held hostage for nearly seven years. During that ordeal, Terry Anderson showed remarkable courage, although he was frequently stretched to near the breaking point. He writes in his memoir of that time that on the first day of his confinement, those who had kidnapped him took him into it uh, by gunpoint, uh, put him in, him in a car, took him to an apartment building, and there he was blindfolded and chained to a cot. During the first three weeks or so of his imprisonment, he was bound and he was restrained more or less like an animal. He says that he struggled to find a way to maintain his sanity. And he realized that there was a, he had to have something more than just his own wits and his own courage to have the strength to deal with what was in front of him. And so he asked his captors for a copy of a Bible. And he tells the story how that came to him. He said that the next day, late in the afternoon, the English-speaking guard came in and threw a heavy object on the bed. He said, I reached for it, felt the smooth covers of a book. Good, he was asked. And he said, yes, very good. He said, I cautiously pulled the blindfold up a bit until I could see the book. It was a Bible, the Revised Standard Version. I caressed it gently. I read the title page, the publishing and the copyright information from the front. And then slowly and then carefully, he says, I read Genesis in the beginning. And that book that he gently caressed helped Terry Anderson to endure the nearly seven years of imprisonment in Lebanon. Here again is an example of how to approach the Bible as a book that can give you hope, encouragement in life's most difficult moments. And we all know that in our lives from time to time, very difficult situations come to pass. And yet we have got to come to the point where like Terry Anderson, we reach beyond ourselves into something more important that transcends our own life to give us the strength and encouragement to deal with the difficult moments of life. I'd like to take you in a few minutes here through a section of, of the scriptures here in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and help you to understand something about this book that really lifts it beyond the realm of a piece of literature or 
a, an ancient book written by people who really have no connection to us in the, in the modern world. When we really take the time to study the, the words of this book and adapt them in, to our own day in, in terms of understanding that they apply to us and we, ad we adopt them into our own life, we have something that is going to help us through all the difficult times of our life, but it involves us taking a readiness at, uh, to, to the scriptures that puts us there on a regular, almost daily basis to gain insight and understanding into our life. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, the Apostle Paul is writing here to Timothy, a younger minister. And he says to Timothy, You have carefully followed my doctrine and my manner of life, purpose and faith and long-suffering and love and perseverance. And the persecutions and the afflictions which happened to me in the various places that he, that he had uh, gone. And Paul makes a statement here at the end of verse 11. He says, Out of them all the Lord delivered me. Paul understood that God was in his life. God was, was delivering him from times of difficulty and trial. And just like Terry Anderson, just like many others have learned over the years, God does deliver us. God does work with us. But we have to apply ourselves to understand exactly what He is doing and seek to serve and obey God in a, in a, with a passionate way that really makes the Scriptures come alive and are embedded within our own life. He, he goes on here, as he says to Timothy, that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you've learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them. And that from the childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 16, Paul gives three principles that help us to understand the Bible. He said, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is not a dry, dusty, ancient book that was written by illiterate men of a different bygone world. This was written under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. And he says it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, which is another word for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Doctrine is not something that people perhaps understand completely today from the Scriptures regarding the Bible. Doctrine gets down to how God, who God is and, and what God is all about, His purpose and who Jesus Christ was. Doctrine also teaches about how we are as human beings to approach God, how we are to worship God in, in our lives. Not everyone wants to understand and study the Bible from, for doctrine today, but it is a very important part of life, very essential to us in relating to God and knowing how to live our lives. He also said that the Bible is profitable for correction. Once again, if you're like me, you don't like to be told that you're wrong. But the Bible can be read as a, as a source that teaches us and, and shapes our path and how we live each day in our life and helps us to avoid some of the potholes that we sometimes fall into in life and how to avoid those and even how to get out of them when we've fallen into them. Correction is something that is it's important to living a successful life which is really the third point of Paul's instruction here, that the Bible is a book of an instruction for righteousness. You know, on the shelves of my home, I have a lot of books that deal with success. You probably have a lot on your shelves as, uh, as well. How to be more effective, how to be a good manager, how to, how to be a good leader. I've read those books, I've marked them over the years, I've gone back to them, and they've meant a great deal to me. But you know something? In recent years, I've come to realize that this book, the Bible, that instructs me in righteousness is really the foundation of all the books that deal with success. All the self-help books that, that we want to read and, and want to gain information to make us a better person and more successful in life, this is the best one of them all. And any of the other books that we have that are worth their salt, they're going to be founded on this book as opposed to some a a aspect of human ideas. When they're founded on the Bible, they're going to give us good, solid instruction. That's important. The Bible says many things that you might not know, but it is freely available for each of us to study without fear of punishment. Don't you think that it's time you began a study of this most valuable book? I know it will change your life. It will bring you closer to the God of all creation. Is the Bible more than a literary text or a book of wisdom? Is it the revealed word of the Creator God? The Bible has a direct challenge to you, a challenge you cannot ignore. When we return, we'll see what that challenge is. Stay with us.
Though the oldest, most famous, and popular book in world history, most people have never really proven, is the Bible true? Call 1-888-886-8632 or go to beyondtoday.tv for your free copy of the exciting publication, Is the Bible True? Is it relevant in the modern world with its deep spiritual teachings of right and wrong, social good and social evil, defining truth as no other book? See the Bible's insights into biological science, modern genetics, medicine, and principles of human health. See how hundreds of findings of archaeology continue to reveal the exact descriptions in the Bible and the amazing prophecies about the world of today and tomorrow. Get your free copy of Is the Bible True by calling 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632 or go to beyondtoday.tv. Does God really exist? Scientists now say you can prove it. What's the best way to rear your children for success? Questions need positive answers to the world's greatest issues and your personal ones as well. That's what you'll get when you get your free subscription to the Good News Magazine. Call toll-free 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go to beyondtoday.tv for your free subscription. You'll be glad you did. And we are back to Beyond Today. We're talking today about the book that nobody knows. You just saw an ad for the Good News Magazine, which you can go online for and request your free one-year subscription. Go online at beyondtoday.tv for your free subscription. We all want to know what the future holds for ourselves, our friends in this world. The Bible is a book that tells us about the future. Many people believe prophecies found in the Bible, yet they do not believe all that the Bible teaches. Nearly 60% of Americans believe the world's heading for a final battle of Armageddon. They find this prophecy in the Bible. What if they're right? What if there will come a day of judgment? What would that mean to you? Are you ready for such an event? Where would you stand? If the Bible is true, then there are some changes you need to make. We're joined for this segment with the Beyond Today panel, Steve Myers and Gary Petty. Gentlemen, Christ noted a very sad fact of history that only a relative handful of people responded to the Bible and its teachings. Why is that, Steve? Well, so many people are so consumed with their own lives and what's important to them at the very moment. I, I think it's a reflection of our society today. We're so involved with ourselves, our own lives, our own families, the things that we're concerned with, that we don't see the big picture. We really don't take the time to understand what life is really all about and what God wants us to do, what He wants for us. And so we try to overlook that, and we're so consumed with being busy that we don't do the things that we should do. And so people overlook the important aspects of the spiritual things that God would have us do. It was interesting in Matthew chapter 13, yes. Jesus gives a parable and explains about the sowing of the Word and explains why so many people don't respond to the Word. But what's interesting is his conclusion where he talks about the people who do respond. And the people who do respond, he says, they understand and they bear fruit. In other words, those people get into the Bible and with God's guidance, they take those words and it changes their, their lives. Their lives get better. There's fruit born in their lives. So the positive aspect of this is a lot of people keep looking at the Bible, rejecting its message, but the people who do, their lives get better. I, I think you hit on it there too for a minute when you said you have to make a commitment. You know, if right. the Bible's true, which it is, you've got to do something about it. You've got to change the way that you live. And that means doing things different. And boy, it's, it's tough to make those changes. Okay, l let's name one challenge that the Bible makes to the individual. Well, there's so many to choose from. I, I think Christ himself challenged those during his lifetime when he said, in vain they worship me. And they taught the, the doctrines of men as though those are the things we're supposed to follow. Teaching his doctrines, the commandments of men. And how many times do we fall into this, what I believe and what I think and what they think, instead of really going to the creator of the universe and seeing what he thinks and what he would have me do in my life. We don't do that. And it's a challenge. What does God teach? What does he want me to do in my life? We should find that out and follow it. You talked about the Bereans. Yes. And that's a challenge. Search the scriptures daily. If you search the scriptures daily with a heart open, your mind open for God to come in and teach you from that book, what you're going to find is that there are words of comfort. You're going to find that there's strength in time of need. And that book will tell you how to live your life. Approach this Bible, get it out, take the challenge, search it daily. 
I talked in the earlier segment about the, the Bible being much different from works of literature or other forms of self-help and success type leader, uh, literature. What can you add to that discussion? How exactly is the Bible different from self-help literature, Gary? You know, one of the things I think of right off is so many of these books are about changing behavior. Yes. What the Bible is about is having God change your nature, the way you think, the way you feel, a complete change of who you are so that you can literally become his child. And I think that's, that's the big change. It's about a change of nature, a big difference, not just change of behavior. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, overall, we, we can try to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, but rather than looking to ourselves, we've got to look to God. Instead of self-help, we've got to realize we need God's help. That's the most important shift in our perspective is understanding God has a purpose in our lives and we need to look to Him. It's not self-help, it's God help. Yeah, God's got to be in, in a part of our life if, if we're going to live life successfully. Don't you think that's something people come to through experience, uh, but they also need to go to the, the Word to understand that? Well, there's no doubt. They've got to go to the Bible to understand the truth of what God's teaching. For truth, that's the source. And if you're not going to the Bible, you're not going to know where the, the, the real source is. So you can come up with all kinds of ideas, and there's a million different explanations out there. But when you look for truth, that's the basis, the Word of God. And I'm not sure they're finding that through experience. That's why they keep writing more and more self-help books. The bottom line is we have to realize at some point we can't do this. We have to have the help of our Father, our Creator. But they're not understanding where to go to get where that. Where to go to get it. Right. What difference does it make? What difference will it make when a person reads the Bible? You know, when you get into the Bible and you really get into studying it from cover to cover, you're going to discover who God is, who your Creator is, who Jesus Christ is. You're going to discover the purpose for your life and you're going to discover how you can receive eternal life, and you're going to discover how this life can be better now. Now, what's more than that? What's better than that? That's what you can discover by getting into the Scripture. This is a fascinating topic. It's important to your life, and we're not done with it. We've had, we have one final comment to make. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. In a digital world that redefines truth with every new technology or social movement, where scientific truth is measured in test tubes, you need to prove whether the Bible is a source of truth greater than any humans could invent. Call 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go to beyondtoday.tv and get your free copy of Is the Bible True? Find out the closer you look. If Christ were to return now, what would it mean to the average person? If the judge of all mankind called for an accounting, where would you be found? What should you do with the information we've discussed in this program? The Bible is indeed the inspired instruction of the Creator of the universe to all mankind. Many men and women gave their lives that you and I might have this valuable book. The message is clear. No matter what others may do, you have the power and the responsibility to take personal action and seek God. The Bible is a reliable guide to human conduct. It is God's word to a spiritually bankrupt humanity. It is our Maker's instruction book telling us how we should live. Seek God now while He can be found. That's the Bible's real challenge to you. For Beyond Today, I'm Darius McNeely. Thanks for watching. For the free literature offered on today's program, go online to beyondtoday.tv. Please join us again next week on Beyond Today.